Hello everyone and welcome to a new series I'm starting on my channel, Astro Lens Reviews. In this series, I'll be reviewing some popular astro lenses and also some not so popular lenses that might just be hidden gems for astrophotography. As with all my other videos, the reviews will be all scientific and straight to the point as much as possible. Now, since I'm a college student making photography videos in my free time, I can't afford to actually buy every single lens I test and I'll be renting my lenses. This can get relatively expensive when you factor in the cost of the rentals, but also gas to drive out of the city and also my time in the field. So subscribing and also supporting me on Patreon would be much appreciated. Your support makes this content possible. It truly does. But with that out of the way, let's get to our first lens in this series, the Sigma 40mm f1.4 ART. This lens is part of Sigma's ART lineup, which are typically very sharp and high quality, a few of which have developed a reputation in the astrophotography community. The 40mm, however, doesn't really get a lot of attention because of its strange focal length. 40mm as a focal length is pretty tight for a landscape astrophotography shot, but I find that it's not as bad as people think, and even at 40 millimeters, you can get the core of the Milky Way along with the Rho Ophiuchi cloud complex in one frame. To be fair, the difference between a 40 millimeter focal length and something like a 20 millimeter focal length is drastic, and you won't be getting the sweeping landscapes that are the common look in Astro, but that's what panoramas are for, and a 40 millimeter f1.4 optic will have plenty of light gathering ability for super detailed photos that you could stitch together to produce a higher quality result. This lens comes in a variety of mounts and is designed for use on full frame cameras. I rented the Canon version with an adapter, but it is available natively for the E mount as well as Canon, Nikon, Sigma, and L mount cameras. It has 16 glass elements in 12 groups with 6 low dispersion glass elements and 1 aspherical element, which are designed to increase light transmission and minimize aberrations, which is promising for Astro. It costs around $1,400 new, but strangely enough, these are going for significantly less on eBay, around $800 to $1,000. Physically, the lens has a nice construction with a good focus throw. The focus ring is also really nice to use, which is a plus for focusing on stars at night. The lens is very large and heavy, and since I could only rent the Canon version, I'm adapting it to my Sony, and the adapter adds even more weight and bulk to the setup. Combine this with the battery grip, which I use to balance these larger lenses, and you have a roughly five pound setup. Usually I don't care about weight, but if I were to take this lens hiking or put it on a small portable tracker, I might start to get wary. That being said, during my testing, I had it mounted to an iOpteron Sky Tracker with no problems. On to image quality. For astrophotography, I'm only concerned with a few things. My primary concern is aberrations, chromatic aberration, astigmatism, and coma, all of which can affect the way stars look. I'm also concerned with sharpness and vignetting as well. Before we get into image quality though, I wanna go over my testing methodology. For all my lenses I test, I will be using a tripod and a polar aligned star tracker so that there is no star trailing. I will also be using my trusty Sony a7R2 camera with 42 megapixels to expose any imperfections in the lenses. Remember that if you're using a camera with a lower resolution, you should expect the lens to perform slightly better in sharpness and aberrations than what I show. My shutter speed will be 20 seconds for each photo, and since aperture affects the performance of the lens, I will be comparing photos at every aperture setting. For all my tests, I will be shooting in as dark of skies as I can find up in the Superior National Forest of Minnesota for this test, which is a Bortle 1. Since this is also my first lens I'm reviewing, I won't have very many direct comparisons between rival models, not that there are many other 40mm astro lenses to begin with, but as my database of reviews grows, I'll be able to work that into my videos. Also, please be aware that right now in northern Minnesota, there's a lot of wildfire smoke in the area, which might make the Milky Way look a little hazy, and even though I've waited a month for the smoke to die down, it's just not looking like it will until the fall. So I just went ahead with the tests and um, we're just gonna have to deal with it. But with that out of the way, let's get into performance, starting with chromatic aberration. Examining images from this lens, I noticed virtually zero chromatic aberration. 
even on larger, brighter stars, this lens would just not produce any visible fringes, which was extremely impressive. Compare this to the Tamron 35mm f1.4 SP lens that I actually own, and you can see what a huge difference there is, and the Tamron is still a highly regarded lens. Chromatic aberration can be really detrimental to astrophotos, so it's great to see this lens perform so admirably in this category. Now on to coma and astigmatism. Coma and astigmatism are star deforming aberrations that smear the round shape of stars and unlike chromatic aberration which can actually be corrected for with post-processing, there's basically nothing you can do to fix a star that isn't round. So the level of these aberrations can make or break an astral lens. With the Sigma 40mm f1.4, examining the center of the image, we see no problems at all, which would be expected. Almost all lenses are free from star deforming aberrations in the center of the frame. But how about as we move towards the edges? Mid frame, we see no issues either. The stars look round and sharp. At the extreme edges, I can't see anything major, maybe just a hint of coma in the extreme edges, but if we're being honest, this is the best performance you can expect from any lens on the market. Comparing this result to the Tamron, which again is a great astro lens already, a review on that will be coming soon, you can see that it even edges out the competition with the Tamron showing some small wings on the stars and the Sigma showing virtually nothing in comparison. Again, the performance by the Sigma here is amazing. Coma and astigmatism changes with the aperture value, typically decreasing as you stop down the lens. And on the Sigma, there's maybe a little bit of change as you stop down, but at f1.4, the result is already super sensational, so I wouldn't hesitate to use this lens wide open at f1.4. Now, let's talk about vignetting, because this is a category where the Sigma may fall short. In astrophotography, a natural vignette is not a bad thing, but too much can be a problem. At f1.4, the situation is not amazing, but also not unexpected. I would call this an average performance. Vignetting is really a result of the physics of light and lenses, and although the Sigma is a huge lens with a gigantic 82mm front element, because it has so many elements which can reduce light transmission in the extreme corners, we still see vignetting. Stopping down the lens, thankfully we can see vignetting improve significantly, and by f2 there's really no glaring issue. This is really great to see, since some lenses don't improve at all until f2.8 or even f4. On a gray wall, the vignetting is really pronounced, and at f1.4 I measure a loss of around 2 to 2.5 EV in the extreme edges. Stopping down, this maximum vignetting value improves to around 1.2 EV at f2, and by f2.8 I can barely see any vignetting in the corners. The gray wall test really accentuates vignetting though, so don't get hung up that the values might be high, because in the real world, you won't be shooting gray walls, you'll be shooting dark skies or other things where vignetting won't be as noticeable. In short though, the Sigma has a pretty average result for vignetting with some strong fall off wide open, but a quick improvement on stopping down. Finally, what about sharpness? Sharpness is one of those lens attributes that, in my opinion, is valued too highly, but for astrophotography, sharpness matters a lot since stars are tiny and nebulas are small, so they benefit from better resolving power on the lens. As you've seen already, the sharpness on the Sigma is perfect, and in astrophotos, I can't notice any fall off in sharpness between the center and the extreme edges even at f1.4. Stopping down may improve the sharpness a hair, but I'm perfectly content with shooting this thing wide open. Comparing this to the Tamron, which is already one of the sharpest lenses on the market, it's hard to spot a difference, honestly. Taking this to a more typical situation, we can examine the sharpness more clearly. For this test, I'm shooting a typical landscape with lots of details we can look at. Be aware that there's a lot of smoke in the air right now, uh, so that might affect sharpness a little bit. But at f1.4, the image is tack sharp from corner to corner with only the slightest drop in sharpness at the extreme edges. This is honestly the best result I have ever seen on a lens. Stopping down the aperture, you can see there's a marginal improvement in the center and the corners tighten up just a bit. But again, at f1.4, the result is already amazing. Besides these properties, there isn't really much to test if you're using this lens just for astrophotography. If you're looking for other results relating to ghosting, flare resistance, autofocus, or anything else, 
I will divert your questions to reputable scientific reviews that test these categories. Overall then, how does the Sigma 40mm f1.4 art do for Astro? Well, in short, it's as good as it gets. Sharpness is amazing, vignetting is well controlled, and aberrations are almost non-existent. My only reservation is the large size and hefty weight of the lens, which can be annoying to carry about all the time, but for class-leading performance, it's honestly something I can compromise on. While the new price of the Sigma isn't bad for what you get, if you're okay with buying lenses secondhand, then you can get some sweet deals on this model. It's not a budget lens by any means, but it's better than basically every other lens on the market, including overpriced options from Nikon, Canon, and Zeiss. And don't worry, I'll be talking about those overpriced options in a later video. Trust me, I have some things to say. My final note is on the 40 millimeter focal length. 40 millimeters, honestly, is a little tight for Astro, especially if you want to include landscape elements in your photos. If you want to create sweeping landscape astrophotography shots, you will need to do some panorama stitching. There's no question about that. And for a lot of people, that's a turnoff. The flip side of that is that 40 millimeters is an uncommon focal length, and a bit of uniqueness in your photos is really never a bad thing, so this lens could allow you to create unique astro shots that stand out. The Sigma 40mm f1.4 is a hidden gem of a lens, a real sleeper. If you crave optical quality, then this lens is perfect for you, offering near-perfect performance in every aspect. Will it replace my Tamron 35mm f1.4? Well, the Tamron is a great lens as well, with similar performance, and one I will definitely be reviewing later down the line, so we'll just have to see. But the Sigma seems to be a little bit better than even my beloved Tamron. If you enjoyed this review, stay tuned for more as I break down the most popular Astro lenses and also show you some of the hidden gem lenses, like this one, that you may have never heard of. If you want to decide which lens I should review next, head over to my Patreon and cast your vote. All of my videos are viewer suggested, so I'll be looking forward to seeing what you guys have to say. Thanks for watching, and I wish everyone clear skies. Thank you so much for watching this Apolapse photography video. If you would like to support the channel, the best way is through subscribing with notifications so that you don't miss any new content. Feel free to rate and share the video, and if you have any feedback, I will try my hardest to respond to your comments and incorporate any suggestions into future videos. If you prefer to read my content instead of watching it, or want to view other helpful articles, tutorials, and learn more about Apple Apps, then visit my new website, appleapps.org. To follow me on my photography adventures, visit my Instagram page, at Vincent Ledvina, and also my print store. Finally, consider joining my Patreon for one-on-one -on -one support and extra content, check out my Buy Me a Coffee page, Visit my merch store to buy clothing with unique Apple App style designs, and as always, PayPal donations are an option. All these resources will be linked in the description. With that, thank you for watching and I hope all of you have a great day.